I still remember the first time I seen it. I was in absolute awe. 2D sprites coexisting in a 3D environment? It just seems so groundbreaking. What's up developers, I'm that one Unity dev, and today I'll be showing you guys how to implement your 2D sprites into a 3D environment to create something similar to what you're looking at on screen. Before we jump into today's video, if you're new around here and want to learn more about Unity or game creation as a whole, please consider subscribing. I typically post about topics that don't have a lot of resources online, and even ones suggested by you guys. I usually start my tutorial videos by talking about what we're going to do first, and maybe even some relevant background information. But I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. We just hit this button in Unity, and now we have 2D sprites in a 3D environment. Well, video's over. See you guys next time. I'm just kidding. There's actually quite a bit of work that needs to be done before we have something that actually looks good. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. Starting from scratch in an empty 3D URP project, I import the sprite package from the package manager. I then import my character sprites, some ground tiles, and set up a simple terrain. I could have just used a plane, but I opted for using the terrain for an extra dimension. Height. After giving the terrain a quick makeover, I create an empty game object, name it to player, and do the unthinkable. I drag my sprite into the 3D environment. After making a child of the empty and centering it, you can see we are already halfway to our goal. If you are a beginner and try to continue on your own, the biggest roadblock you will run into at this point will probably be the player movement. Typically throughout my tutorial videos, I kind of just shrug off player controllers with the not my problem attitude, but this time is a little bit different. Since we are doing something outside the norm, I will show you how I tackle this problem. So usually in an 2D environment, your player has a 2D rigid body with 2D colliders, gravity, etc. Well, we can't really do that in this case because we need our player to interact with the 3D world around them. To solve this, we'll add a sphere collider to our main parent object, a normal rigid body, and a new player controller script that we're about to make. Then open up the player controller script. Before we get into the actual code, let's take a break and explain what we're trying to achieve first. So, obviously, we want to move our player around in the game environment. You know, left, right, maybe even forwards and backwards into our scene if we want to get fancy. But, because we have height in our game, and no physics, when we move our player on this hill for instance, he will simply just clip into it and ignore any surface he should otherwise be standing on. To fix this, we are going to do something called a raycast and snap him to the ground. So, now that we know what we're doing, Let's see what that looks like in actual code. In Visual Studios, as you can see, I went ahead and I created the player controller. In this script, we have a few public variables. One for movement speed, one for the snapping distance to the ground, one for the terrain layer, and one for the sprite renderer of the player's sprite. In start, we get the rigid body of the player. In an update, we use a raycast to shoot a line from the player downwards that only detects the terrain layer. Then, if that line hits the terrain, we simply move the player a set height above the point it hit. Below that, we're using the rigid body to move the player. Honestly, it's not that much different from what you might normally do. Just getting input, setting velocity. I also flip my sprite's X in the sprite renderer depending on what way you're moving. Back in Unity, we can create a new layer called terrain and assign our terrain that layer. On our player script, I set my speed to 2, set my terrain layer to the one we just created, and drag and drop the sprite renderer of my player sprite into its variable slot. If we hit play, you can see the player has now snapped to the terrain, although it doesn't quite look right. During runtime, we can adjust the y distance to the snapping point. Once you get something that looks good, make a note of the number, exit runtime, and write it in the field. Now we can hit play and walk around our environment. Awesome. Next we can focus a bit more on the visuals and better sell the 2D 3D effect. I went ahead and imported a 3D model I created earlier. All I did to create this model was go into Blender, slap my image on a plane, cut it out with the knife tool, and give it some thickness. This gives a very cool effect, and as you can see, by using the same art style on the 3D model, Unity is doing all the heavy lifting and essentially closing the gap between the 2D and 3D world. 
After importing this other character sprite and putting him in the scene, we can see he looks a bit flat compared to the house model. To give us some extra depth, we can create a new child sphere object, disable the collider, make it not render, and instead only cast shadows. This looks so much better, and in fact, we can repeat the same process for the player character. Add animations is the exact same process as if you were working in a 2D environment. No difference there. Although, if you want to move the shadows to better match your animation, make sure you set your curves to constant in the curve editor. To make the camera follow the player, I import the Cinema Machine package, create a 2D camera, set the follow target to the player, change the X rotation, and play with the Z position and FOV to get something I'm happy with. After importing more sprites, adding animations, and a touch of post-processing, you can see the scene really has come together. The hardest part of creating the scene was actually the aftermath, because now I want to create an entire game in this style. But that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed today's video, consider showing the like and subscribe button some love or even leaving a comment. It really goes a long way to help YouTube recommend this video and gets me one step closer to being monetized. If you get stuck, we've also built a wonderful community on Discord where we all help each other out. And if you have some video suggestions or feedback, I'd love to hear it. But that's all the time we have for this video. Thanks for watching and staying until the end. Bye.